Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. We are starting today's video with a little bit of flair. Uh, we got a flex that we have our 7 million coins liquid. We're probably closer to 8 million right now. We had a super good day of trading yesterday. There was a lot of moves to make, and the market moved kind of how we expected for the UCL promo. So I really hope you guys are staying up to date on the videos. I am going to follow up on a couple of things from our last video to confirm they did happen and talk a little bit more about them. But today I'm going to also talk about new promo card trading and what I did and why it worked and different buy points and hopefully help some of you guys out with learning about it. If you guys like the video, all that asks is you like the video. It really helps push our channel and we've had amazing growth so far. It really means the world to me. And if you're new here and you want to keep learning about trading, feel free to subscribe. All right, guys. So I feel like to stay up to date on this video, we need to talk about something very important that happened, and that is going to be the no loss glitch. What happened with the no loss glitch was people discovered that they could exit games and get free wins, and people were doing this in mass. There were viral TikTok videos on it. People were sharing with their friends so they could get essentially eight and zero, twelve and zero, twenty and zero in a matter of hours. And there are thousands of people doing it. And I'm not sure if any of you guys watching were one of them. I hope not because EA did say they're going to take some repercussions on that. It looks like people are getting banned and even console banned for it. It does break their terms of service. Obviously, it's not how you're intended to play, play the game. I do personally blame EA for the issue. You shouldn't be allowed to have those issues. They should have turned off matchmaking, but it is against terms of service a little bit. So what happened with Team of the Week, and I am going to show you a few different examples here. What happened was Team of the Week cards started getting crazy supplied yesterday, and that is that is because people were getting their Team of the Week packs from all this glitching and all this basically finishing like 8-0, 12-0, 20-0 in a matter of hours and minutes. So Rafinha was 86k yesterday, and then even before content time, so there wasn't like promo pack supply or anything like that. There wasn't a ton of panic. What happened was he went from 87k down to like 65k so that's a 20k drop on a really nice card right this guy is great he's got brazilian links he's got prem links people like this card he's used a lot what happened was he dropped like 20k and then it looks to me about at this point people tried to rebuy him because they thought he was really low which rightfully so at some point cards just get too low and uh, he kind of recovered just a little bit and then he's back down today and even today he dropped down heavily he's he's fluctuating a lot but he went from like 57 all the way down to 50k if you see this card at 50k to me that looks really low i feel like card is just too good for that price to be honest with you so i can only see that increasing over time here now just to give you one more example of this this is romero a great a great center back i'm hearing he's really good on this game so if you want a 20k prem center back this is your guy what happened was he was like 37 38k and then again yesterday dropped to 24k small rebound people tried buying in it looks like and then back down today he actually dipped as low as like 18k overnight so he's just a little bit up from there but that's what happened and what happened was not only did it hurt the team of the week right what happened was it really really hurt their alternatives so when a prem inform center back gets super cheap what happens is people want to upgrade to him or switch to him and that really killed cards like Joe Gomez. So here's a kind of a funny example of uh, substitute investing, and people were using Romero instead of Gomez. So Gomez literally halved in value yesterday. He was 16K. He went down to 8K. These are cards we expected to drop if you watched yesterday's video about the UCL promo, but not this aggressively. And this is from the ones to watch clip glitch. Hopefully you guys are aware of that and you see how it plays into the market here. Now, lastly, as one more follow-up, I do just want to talk about things that happened yesterday and things pretty much happened exactly how we said they would happen. So Cards like Pogba, I, I said they're starting at like 120k, you'll see a sharp dip in them, and he actually dipped as low as 105k and then rebounded. He's back up to 125k today. So if you guys bought in during that panic and that uh, initial rebound window on cards like Pogba, I think he was one that I mentioned, De Young, they look really, really good. Cards that have dropped a lot were ones that we said would drop a lot. Lacroix, if you guys watched on video, he was 25k when I made that video, and I said expect him to drop this weekend from Gavardio. 25k all the way down to 16k. So if you would have sold him, you would have saved like 8k there. And then the last one is Benyetter. I expected him to drop under 30k, which was like an 8k drop. I don't know if I have him here. Let's go to League One real quick. And there you go, Ben Yedder is under 30k, just as expected. He was 37k when I made that video, so if you sold him at 37k and you're buying him back at 28k, you're looking pretty good right now, and you're saying, this guy might know what he's talking about, I should think about following him, subscribing him. 
loving him, hugging him. You know how it is. Now, hopefully that pro provided some huge insight on the market movements we saw yesterday and why they moved how they did. It was a really confusing market day. So it's not something that I think a lot of casuals could go on and say like, oh, I know exactly what happened yesterday and why these cards drop or rose. And it, it, it's too tricky. And there was that no loss glitch really heavily affecting it. So you do have to be really aware of that. Now, I want to talk about the new promo card flipping, which is what I kind of highlighted as we start the video. I'll talk about my own trades in a second, but I'll show you a really good example. So this Isaac, 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 I'm going to call him Isaac. I know words. I have the best words. Hopefully that's right. Um, <laughs> he's Swedish. He's like the Swedish Ibra. He's really good on this game. He had a lot of hype from his team of the season in FIFA 21, and he's probably one of the better strikers in that league, to be honest. People always say he plays freakishly good. He's really tall, and he's really lengthy. He's 6'4", so he's got four-star skills, five-star weak foot. So this card's heavily in demand. He's got a lot of upvotes on footpin. This is kind of like a secret way to tell of how many people are going to look to buy him or enjoy him is the upvotes on Footpin. So keep an eye on that if you're kind of gauging usability. Now, what happened with Isaac was he came out and he he came out and he got down to like 105 to 110k in the first hour, and that was honestly just way too low. I saw the price, and I by the time I saw the price come in, I went to my console, I went to my web app, I checked, and he was not that price on the market. So I missed the low, but I thought to myself like, hey, that is way too low for this card. He's going to rise. And then what happened was that first hour, people bought him up at 105. It won't read this here. And he went all the way up to like 190K at peak price. And that was during that first hour, okay? And some of that was forced. Some of that was forced by trading groups, by traders, just buying a lot of him and trying to list high. If you're buying in that first hour, there's not all that much supply. So what happened was people kind of forced that rise and he went all the way up to 190K here. Again, not going to read it, but I'm telling you that as a fact. What happened was afterwards, he dropped down super duper heavily. So he went from literally 190 down to 143. And what happened was people kind of oversold him. So some people probably bought too high, closer to 170, 180, 190. And then they got scared that their card wasn't up or it was dropping and they all panic sold him down here. So this was another entry point on him, and I actually bought a few of him uh, at this time yesterday at like low 140s, um, and then overnight he also started dropping. So he went from low 140s there to upper 160s, so I knew he had that demand. And then overnight again he, he dropped again, and this is a common theme. I actually did a video already on... Uh, overnight trends but the market tends to be really low from like 12 to 5 a.m uk just because people are not buying kind of what happened was he he dipped really low at this time and you had another buy opportunity i was get, picking him up at like 140 to 143 on bids and snipes it's really feasible you don't have a ton of competition at this time and then today he rose back up to 168 and i am just going to flip you guys over to that screen again just to show you where i did sell him and that was this morning i I had to clear quite a few sales, but he was right in this range. I actually had 11 of him, so it ended up being like 200k profit in a short period of time, and that was a really nice flip and a good buy window is at 12 to 5 a.m. UK time. Another card that ended up doing really well was this Tonali, and Tonali is actually the most popular player on Flip, and every time I refresh it, every time I search, he is getting to be the lead most popular player, which means people are searching him a lot, they're interested in him. He's got crazy good stats. It's too bad Milan probably aren't going to push too much further, but this is a really juiced card because he already had the 81 in form, and people are really interested in this card. So what happened was, yesterday he kind of showed proof that he could rise. He went all the way up to like 165, 170, and then he started coming down again from those people who bought a little too high and got nervous. And again, you're kind of seeing that he went from 140 back up, and so he's showing that demand and back down. And this window, again, it was a little bit later this time. It was like 4 to 6 a.m. was a perfect time to buy. And I was picking him up at like 142. I can insert a screenshot right here as proof. And then I was selling him at like 169. And again, I will flip you back over to the screen. There's your proof in there, 169, 165, 167, etc. So... Yeah, it's really good, and that ends up being like 15k a card on him, and I actually had 13 of him. Really great profit on him, and you're seeing a few different buy points, right? You're seeing at that 9 a.m. time when there's a really peak supply, and then overnight, and overnight is where I felt most comfortable because I kind of already can see how in-demand players are at that point, and I tried to buy into a few of them for sure. Lastly, I did the same thing with Trior. He's like the only right back in League One that's not Hakimi. So he's actually brought down Hakimi's price with him. And that's important to know because people are like, oh, I don't need Hakimi anymore. I'll just use Trior. 
and they get him instead because he's like 50k and Hakimi is like triple that price so it actually brought down Hakimi like 30k and I don't see Hakimi recovering super strong because of that and I was buying these last night and I'll sort of insert another screenshot here so you guys can say I'm a legit trader I'm not terrible I was buying him at 42 to 43 primarily and then selling at 52 to 53 so all in all just overnight I ended up ended up making like close to 700k profit uh, and yesterday I made about a million coins trading these cards I had a few Rodrigo's I flipped as well and then I actually flipped like six to seven Sanes I think um, I bought him at 400 and sold him upwards of 460 on most of the cards. Again, here's a couple more screenshots of that. So it was a really successful day and it didn't take all that long to make like a million coins. You just have to know the market well. Again, I hope that these videos help you guys learn where we're coming from. And there's some trading methods that are more advanced and this is going to be one of them. But hopefully you learned something about it today and you see how profitable it can be in a short period of time if you know the right cards the right buy windows and how the market works. If you made it this far, just comment an emoji down below so I know you did. Like the video if you did like the video. Subscribe if you're new here. See you next time. Later.